Hello Mayhem Makers, I'm Mindy with Quilting Mayhem and welcome to week nine of Summer Sampler. It's our last week uh, for blocks at least, um, which is kind of sad because it means we're at the end. But today we're doing, it'll look like this. Now mine doesn't even look like this. I actually changed up the colors. Um, but we're doing foundation paper piecing, which I love. I love the precision of it. You can get all kinds of funky angles and designs. Um, fairly easily because you are sewing on paper, but don't worry, I know there are a lot of you out there that are not a fan of foundation paper piecing, but this one is very simple, very straightforward. We'll walk you through it, so this will be probably kind of a long video, so hang tight, um, but we're going to get you to maybe hopefully enjoy the process. Uh, otherwise, um, <laughs> I do have a way to do this block without paper piecing, but I want you to try it. Just have faith, follow along with me, um, and then if it just doesn't work for you, <laughs> we'll give you a regular straight piecing way to do it. Uh, but So step one, you're going to have your printed patterns. If you come to the shop, um, they're printed for you. If you're doing this you know, just at home on your own, unfortunately, you're gonna have a lot of pieces of paper. So the tools you're going to need today, because there's quite a few, so maybe I'll give you a rundown. Paper scissors, not fabric scissors. <laughs> but you may want some fabric scissors too. Make sure you know the difference. Mine have a little tag that say paper so that hopefully my family will not have to die if they touch the wrong scissors. Uh, <laughs> rotary cutter. I like to use a seam roller when I'm doing a foundation paper piecing because I can't use uh, steam iron because it kind of likes to wrinkle up the paper and this is just easy I don't have to worry about ironing I can do it right here at my uh, cutting station and not be doing a lot of moving around I can just sit at my machine stitch press with this and go so and I'll show you how it works you need some scotch tape to put your pattern together and either glue stick or um, like flat flower pins just to get things started and definitely I'll be showing you how to use all of these now keep in mind for foundation paper piecing, you're always going to sew on the wrong side. So the printed side is always the side facing up that you're stitching on. The fabric will be always on the back, so you will have it kind of in a reverse format. Thankfully with this block, um, there's not a way to be confused. It's not gonna mess anything up. Now, to start with, grab your paper scissors, and I'm just trimming off some of like this excess that is not needed. I don't ha like having a lot of extra stuff on my paper, okay? And what's going to happen is there is a black solid line that is the join line to get these two pieces to become one big piece. I'm going to cut like a quarter inch up from one of them and the other one I'm going to cut straight on that solid line so that I can tape them together and kind of have a join that has a little bit of support. So this is what I would call the bottom half. Once it's together, there is no real top and bottom because um, it goes both ways. Now you know why I named it the way I named it. Um, don't ask me how I come up with these names. Okay, so this is what I'm calling the top half only because the print was starting at the top. This is the one I'm going to cut on the line, all right? So, fairly simple. Once you do that, you can put those scissors away. I am that weirdo that kind of cleans as I go. All right, so one that's cut on the black line, one that's not. What I'll end up doing is taping, lining them up and taping them, so. Move you over here because I cannot do it while holding it up. I just don't have that much skill. So, just kind of lining these two black lines up so that these diagonals, the square, all looks nice and pretty. And don't worry, you can stitch through tape as long as you're not using anything aggressive. But scotch tape, you definitely can um, sew through. Don't recommend necessarily putting an iron on it, which is also why I like using the seam roller. And so now we have just all one pattern. Now, if you look at this pattern, there are numbers. 
<laughs> we'll fix this one. It's actually not numbered correctly. But <laughs> can you tell we're still in testing mode? We're going to start with this in the center. So hopefully on your pattern, this one's going to say one. And then we're just going to go around two, three, four, five. I'm going to work from the center out, which generally I do uh, unless the pattern that, like if I purchased it, purchased it from somebody else, it tells you to start somewhere or it may like start from one way to the other if it's like in a fan motion. Um, it just kind of depends. But for this pattern, we're gonna start right dead center and work our way out, all right? So the hardest part, is generally getting that first fabric lined up. If you have a light box, now's the time to get that out. Um, I unfortunately don't have one. Uh, it died and I didn't think to bring one home. So window also works, lighting, the light on your sewing machine, all of that. But once again, as I said, we're gonna put the fabric on the back, sewing on the front. This is where I would use either a glue stick or uh, some flathead pins because you want that first piece to stay in place. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue. Not a lot, because you eventually want this to come off. I'm going to center it. We're gonna see, I'm gonna hold it up. I don't know that you guys can see through here. Probably not, sure my camera's not that good. But generally I kind of hold it up to the light and make sure there's at least a quarter inch around all of it. I need a, maybe a fun flashlight to do it for you. So I've got it actually pretty well centered, which is great. That's what you want. And then the next steps are fairly simple. Okay. So we put that glue stick away, get everything out of the way. So we're going to work our way around this square. Oh, and an add a quarter. Don't know how I didn't mention that love this thing you can paper piece without it i see people do it it drives me crazy when they do um, but they have their own methods i love this thing so the add a quarter what's nice about this is it has this is a beveled edge and this has kind of a quarter inch lip so see this curves down to a nice sharp point this has that quarter inch lip okay so beveled edge first right on this line we're going to join essentially fabric one, which is the center, which with fabric two, which is this first corner. And I'm going to fold on that line, okay? Because that's the line we're gonna stitch on. Then I take this, line it up right on that folded edge, and I trim off any excess that there might be. This gives me my quarter inch seam allowance, okay? Not a lot of extra. Then, because I now have my quarter inch seam, I can flip it over and I can take that first triangle that I need to apply and just lay it right on that clean edge. And I'm just centering it. And I do kind of what I call a flip test. So I put my fingers on that edge and I just kind of flip it over and make sure it's going to cover all the area it needs to, and it is. All right, so then we just go to the machine. Now, when you go to sew these pieces, change your stitch length. You want to shorten it so that it'll make it easier to take the paper out. So I drop it down to a 2.0 versus a 2.5 in my stitch length. And that way uh, that paper should just tear right out. And so we'll come over to the machine. Do, do, do. <clears throat> I'm just taking it, flipping it. You could pin it if you're worried about that fabric shifting. And then start at the beginning stitch to the end. You don't need to go over, you don't need to go extra. And I don't uh, tack. So I don't do any extra tacking stitches or anything because generally they get added into other seams. Um, but you can, if you're worried about it coming apart, if that makes you feel better, then go ahead and do little tacking stitches at the beginning and the end. Um, and then this is where I'm going to use a seam roller, so it's just going to flatten this. All right. And then we're just going to work our way around this square. So, beveled edge. So now we're going to put these two corners. And notice I have a little more extra than I'd like. So this is where 
We're going to line up that quarter inch. We're going to cut all that extra off, throw it away, and add the next triangle. Okay, just lining it up in the middle again, and then sewing it. So this is all we're going to do around this square. So you do this on each corner where you're just going to sew it, press it, trim it, okay? That is the method. If you trim at the wrong time um, or forget to trim, it will go it will go wrong. And that's generally where people have uh, problems is that they're either forgetting to trim um, or not trimming enough, not trimming correctly. Usually it's forgetting to trim, like or they think they've trimmed first and it just it doesn't go well. So because if I left, like this side, if I didn't measure it from that quarter inch, and I'll show you how much extra there is. So I'm holding on my stitch line here. Okay, so this is my stitch line. This is how much extra. So there's like an eighth of an inch extra, like the last one we just trimmed. If I just went straight into sewing, because people get so excited, they want to just start sewing on the paper. If I lined this triangle up, on that straight edge. I now essentially am creating a 3 8 seam allowance and then I am essentially, I'm not going to have enough of the rest of this triangle um, to fill the space that it needs to fill because I've now taken away 3 8 of it instead of just the quarter inch seam allowance that I need. So it is important that you stop and you know line up that ruler right on that fold and that's where you're going to sew. Now, I do know there are people out there that um, stitch without any thread. They just perforate on every one of those lines, so they have it as a guide. Great, you can do that too. All right, so we're going to flip it over. We're going to pause for a second because my dogs are about to lose their minds, so hold on. Okay, I love when Amazon shows up in the middle of recording sessions. It's fabulous because... My dogs think the Amazon man must die. All right, so we're gonna lay this next one on. We've trimmed it, we now have that quarter inch. We do the flip test. It will now cover everything. And then we're just gonna keep stitching. I'm gonna do the next two corners. We'll come back to the outer steps because otherwise this video will get way too long for you. All right, so we've gone all the way around. We've essentially created a square and a square uh, on paper piecing. So then all you're going to do Flip it back over, and then we'll start working on these top and bottom triangles. So fold on that line again, and we're just repeating all the same steps. So nothing's going to change process-wise for you guys. I'm going to flip it around and just trim both top and bottom at the same time. And notice there's all this excess. We're just cleaning it off. We're just, as I put it, we're preparing this seam. We're getting this seam ready to have its fabric put on it so that you don't have too much underneath. And what you'll end up doing is just lining these triangles up so they're nice and center. Flip, make sure you're going to cover that your point isn't too far off from where it needs to be. All that kind of stuff. And like I said, you can always pin it or you just I hold on to it, I flip it, and I take it right to the sewing machine. And I'm going to do that for both sides. And then all we have is the outer corners. All right. Okay, so here's what I really love. Look, you get these nice, clean points. You don't have to worry about losing them um, because you did your quarter inch too big or anything like that. This is what I love about paper piecing is you can get this precision and you don't have to worry because you're sewing on the lines. You're not worrying about how thick or thin your seam allowance is, any of that. The paper just keeps you nice and precise, all right? So top and bottom triangles are on. You just clean up those two outer edges, doing kind of one side at a time. Same thing. You're going to fold, you're going to trim, then you're going to lay down your triangles and sew. Amazon's telling me my package is here. No kidding. <laughs> All right. Same methods. We're just we're going to keep doing the same thing over and over. 
um, until it's done. So I'm going to add these last two triangles and I'll show you what this one looks like. Um, and this is just the center piece of the square and then we're going to do the two outer pieces. Thankfully, they're the same exact design. So it'll, it'll be easy because you're just doing two of the same thing. All right, so be right back. All right, so the perfect thing occurred. I've been wanting to demo this and trying to figure out how I was going to. If you make a mistake, if you have a problem where a fabric that you sewed on is not covering the space you need, it's not big enough, whatever, um, please do not use a seam ripper to pull your threads out, okay? Because it's that really tight seam, you're gonna shred your paper, you're going to be frustrated. I was taught this uh, trick, <laughs> this seam ripping technique for paper piecing uh, by Judy Niemeyer instructors, and Judy Niemeyer teaches amazing foundation paper piecing, much higher level than these blocks. Uh, so this has been just a lifesaver for seam ripping in general. So. Uh, you take a rotary cutter with a good sharp blade. This one's maybe not as sharp as I would like, but here I'm going to show you because this is fun. Look at what I did. I got my fabric somehow flipped over, but nice and even, even. <laughs> don't ask how it did that, um, and sewed it on itself. Th this is not going to work. So all you do is you kind of pull open at the beginning of one side of the seam, and you're just going to take that blade and just kind of go right at those threads. You see how quick and easy. And I'm keeping one hand kind of on the paper, one hand's pulling. So it's giving some pressure to those threads so that when that blade comes at it, it just pops those seams right apart and you're not actually cutting your fabric because your blade's nice and sharp and it's just getting right at the threads. Okay, and voila. A lot faster than using a seam ripper. My paper is still pretty much intact. It's just got a nice perforated edge, which will actually make it easier to tear in the long run. We're just gonna pull those extra threads out um, and start all over. So that's what happens when you make a boo-boo and you wanna take it out. So <laughs> I'm gonna lay this guy back down and we're gonna try this again. But otherwise I've got everything else on and we're almost there. Okay, so the center piece is done. All that's left is trimming. So because we left extra edges out here, and I don't trim this paper until I'm done doing all my sewing. So in the beginning, that's why I did not trim down to that edge. I like to have it as a guide for trimming the block when I'm done. So I'm just going to lay down the straight edge of my add a quarter right on that outer line and this is your quarter inch seam. So you wanna make sure you're trimming on the outer line and just trim off excess paper, excess fabric. This is why my rotary cutter isn't as sharp as normal. It's because I've been cutting foundation papers with it. Some people have a rotary cutter that's specially designated to be for foundation paper piecing, like for cutting paper. Um, and that's always, that's a good idea too. I know a lot of us have more than one rotary cutter. Um, mine's just being multi-purpose today. So we're just going to keep trimming these edges. And then we'll set this aside. We do not remove the papers until all the pieces are together. I like to just leave that stability in there. All right, so here's the middle. Now we're going to do the outer section. And the outer section, because we're doing two, I have one already done. So kind of looks like mountains. I love it, very simple. Uh, in this one, I'm also going to have you start from the middle, work center, and then the two background pieces, and then two outer pieces. And so since I've already showed you how to tape it, mine's already taped in all together, start in that center. So make sure you grab the correct triangles you need because there are some that are bigger than the others. Grab that glue stick, all right? And I just see where those kind of, I'm staying just inside the line of where the fabric needs to be. And because I can kind of see the bottom of where it needs to be and the top, just trying to lay it out. And then I always do kind of a spot check. So I hold it up and go, oh, I probably could shift it just a little more. Uh, 
this is why sometimes I just use pins so I can kind of shift and not worry about it sticking, but I think we got it kind of a little crooked, you know, that's how my day is going. And I'm just going to add a pin just because I think my glue's being, I'm going to do a whole lot of glue because I hate trying to undo paper and glue. If you leave it too long, it will stick nice and firm and then you have problems. Okay. So then, same thing, fold on that line. If there's any excess, trim it, which there is not. And then you're just going to take your triangle. Now this one, here's gonna be the trickiest thing. Make sure your triangle is laid on here and going the correct way for flipping. Notice how, <laughs> I just had it, so the wrong side's up. A, you don't want that. You wanna make sure you're putting your fabrics right sides together. And then this triangle I have just barely a quarter inch over the diagonal line that you're gonna see through the paper here. You could trace it, and some people do that too. Like if I traced this line, this is my triangle. I wanna make sure this fabric is at least a quarter inch above that line, right sides together, and that it is going to flip the correct way. Okay, so it's going to cover that triangle. If I had done how I normally would have felt it needed to be where the long side's there, it's not covering. It needs to come all the way out here. So do those, te those checks, test them, make sure your fabric's going all the ways it needs to go, and don't be afraid to put just a pin between all the fabric and the paper so that you don't have that shifting, you don't have like I just had the flipping where then that extra part of the triangle tried to get sewn in with everything else. It tried to join the party. Don't be afraid. Add pins, whatever it needs, so that you can get from here to the machine <laughs> sewn without issues. All right, so we're going to add that on. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so it's on. It's happy. We're going to press it. And we're just going to repeat for the other side. So... Same concept, you can draw this line if that helps you. Just have an idea. I'm kind of adding it, just maybe it'll help you with this visual for the demo. Okay, once again, we're kind of 90 degree this way. This is a quarter inch above this line so that once it's sewn, it will flip and be happy, all right? And make sure your right sides together with your fabric, just like in quilting. Take it to the machine, sew it, be right back. All right, so we got you know, mountains, it's looking fun. If this bulk in here starts to bug you, these little dog ears, you can kind of trim them. Just trim that out of there with your fabric shears because um, you don't want a lot of extra. Later on down the road when you go to quilt it and you're wondering why that join is so lumpy, it's because maybe you didn't take out some of that excess. So the last step is just these outer corners we're doing the same things, all right? We're just laying it on the cutting mat. We're folding on the line. We're seeing how much excess there is. And we're going to trim that off. And I'm gonna do both sides trimmed so that I can stitch them both at the same time. If you're new and you wanna just keep doing one at a time, great, that works too. This one didn't have a whole lot of extra. And then we're going to add these last little purple triangles, just lining them up on either side, stitching them. And then we're done with these pieces. We'll show you how to put it all together. Be right back. All right, so now we have two matching sets. We just need to trim them up and then we're going to sew them on. Sometimes I put things away too early. So I just line up on that line, trim any excess off. And remember, we're gonna keep this paper on until we're done at the very end. We want the stability 
of the papers to keep everything, especially because we've got quite a few bias edges now because of these triangles and how they're sewn on, all of that. Okay. One thing about foundation paper piecing, it's very messy. You have a lot of paper at the end, so be prepared. All right, so two nice clean outer pieces. Clean up your mess. Get that center piece back. Put it in the middle. My goodness, this station. Such a mess. All right. Lay these pieces the way they belong on here, all right? Okay, so make sure you have your side pieces the way they should be. And it's going to be straightforward. Flip right sides together. <clears throat> make sure your beginning and your end match. You can always use, um, I have like these little baby wonder clips love these things. Um, sometimes I use these instead of pins uh, because uh, it's just easier than trying to pin through two pieces of paper and all that fabric and all that kind of stuff. I just put a little wonder clip on there. And then what's really nice is you're just going to sew on the line because that's your quarter inch. You don't have to, once again, worry about your quarter inch being too big, too small, too whatever. All right. So let me get these on. I'll show you what it looks like. All right. So, here we go. I know this is kind of a long video. I apologize, but I want to make sure you guys get this process um, the way that makes it successful for you. Uh, hopefully that helped or you fast forwarded through some of the slow parts or maybe you've done foundation paper piecing and you didn't really need me. Um, so I appreciate you hanging in there. The last step is that you're going to take these papers out. So, you know, it's whatever method works for you. Some people will do a little water. I just pull and tear. If I have a piece that's being fussy, I'll grab a stiletto and I'll just kind of score down that seam so that it just helps release that paper and pull it out. And I'm going to pull especially down the seam before I do any pressing. I want all this paper bulk out before I even try to get it nice and flat. So you know whatever it takes but this is the longest part is getting all these papers out if there's little tiny bits of paper in there you know get them wet use tweezers but don't worry too much i i have lots of <laughs> paper piece quilts that have just little tiny bits of paper in there they'll eventually you know through a quilt washing uh, go away they'll just dissolve and i don't worry about it and then also as a side note Generally, I would use what's called uh, Carol Doak's foundation, foundation paper piecing paper for these projects instead of copy paper. But I know uh, a lot of you, hopefully, you know, you're picking up the pattern in the store and we don't have the bigger Carol Doak's and it's, you know, kind of expensive. So you may just be doing copy paper like these ones. Uh, so that's why I demoed just straight up on copy paper um, to kind of show you if you can do it. But I do recommend, if you're going to do a lot of foundation paper piecing, invest in Carol Dokes. Uh, it's just a nice lighter weight. It's still stable enough to sew on all that. Uh, but when you go to tear it out, it's definitely a lot easier than uh, good old copy paper. Um, so once again, whatever works for you. But yeah, just tear all these out before you go put it in a quilt. All right. Probably do a little starch. Always do a little... Um, of my Mayhem Mix, my flatter best press in water at the end. And once the paper's out, you can use steam or just do, you know, hot dry iron, uh, even with the papers on if you want. I mean, maybe you were doing that along the way instead of the seam roller. That's okay too. I just don't recommend steam while you're working with the paper um, and sewing along because the paper will want to kind of warp and do weird funky things. You don't want that. So I've already gotten one side undone it's not bad um, just if you're doing big projects with it 
it becomes a little tedious sitting in front of the TV and do a lot of paper ripping, all right? So, both ways block. I love it. It's super cute. You make a great full quilt. If you have problems, questions, just reach out, email info at Quilting Mayhem. Uh, call us at the store. Come see us at the store. We'll help you out. Um, or if it just really isn't your jam, I'll give you guys uh, just straight up piecing. You can actually do this with um, mostly flying geese and then the square and the square block. So I just wanted to add a little bit of fun this year, give you a new technique, um, especially for those of you that might be new. Hopefully you're learning as you go along uh, this adventure with us for the summer sampler. So this is our last block. And now we're down to just sashing and putting it together. So kind of bittersweet ending. I hope you guys have fun. Make sure you're posting, sharing, hashtagging, uh, quilting mayhem, embrace the mayhem, mayhem maker, uh, QM summer sew along, all the tags so we can see how your quilt is coming along. Um, share all your all your fun and adventures and your fabrics. We love it. And until um, our final week, just keep on stitching. <laughs>